Good evening guys, MC Procrastin here. This is a 10 minute video as part of the 10 minute series. If you don't know what 10 minute series is, check the video link below and you'll find out all about it. So the topic of today is what you need to do when you're looking to buy a used vehicle. Now this could be a used car, this could be a motorbike, anything that's basically used. And you know, like you can apply a bit of common sense to this, right? And what I mean by common sense, if you're buying something that's six months old, or pre-registered, so in other words, or demo, then you, you probably don't need to do this. But if you're looking at something, say, for example, maybe like two, three years old, the more kids, the more you should obviously think about doing this. So I'm actually gonna talk a little bit on experience at the moment. Now, typically, uh, I, if I was going to buy something like a car or a bike, I would always get it checked out. Now, with a motorcycle, what I would do is I would phone a local dealer and I would say, Hey look, I'm looking to buy this bike, um, it's local to you, is there any chance this guy could drop this up to you and I'll pay you to inspect the bike. So usually like a dealer, at least in New Zealand anyway, will charge anywhere between $100 to $200 to inspect the bike for you and they'll give you like a written sort of appraisal saying hey look this is the tire condition, this is the brakes, uh, this is how it rides etc etc. And look, whilst that won't mitigate against any prob any unlikely problems you're going with the bike, what that will do is give you reassurance on one, if you need to negotiate and say, hey look, by the way, the appraisal came back and said that the brakes are down, right? So the brakes, they're uh, like 20% more, they're gonna need to be replaced in a thousand Ks, or the tires got 500 or maybe 2,000 2, Ks left on it. So one, it gives you leverage with regards to negotiating on the bike you're buying because of certain costs that may be um, coming up soon. But more importantly, it gives you reassurance that what you're buying doesn't have any significant problems that are, I guess what, like significant problems that are easily identifiable without stripping the engine apart. Look, you can't, you can't mitigate against all risk, but what you can do is you can mi mitigate against a good portion of risk, right? And then. Example number two, so for those of you that watch the series, you'll be aware that I'm, I'm looking to buy a, a supercar. Now, I'm not going to tell you what supercar it is, but I've been working on doing a deal at the moment with somebody down in the South Island, based in Queenstown, and I have to say, it's a lot of money, it's a really, really nice car, but one of the things that I did with this, because obviously I'm not going to spend like 60, 70, 80 odd thousand dollars, to buy something that is a potential problem. And again, I say potential problem, you can never really 100% get away from the issues, but following due diligence, making sure you take off most of the boxes, will at least help you somewhat to that. So the example goes a little bit like this. So I phoned this guy, he'd imported the car from the UK, he had about a year, two previous owners in the UK before him, and the car's done a little bit of case that would certainly warrant inspection on a supercar, and, um, you know, I explained to him, look, really like the car, blah, 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 blah. If we can agree a price, what I'd be prepared to do is take the car to a local dealer. Is there a dealer that's close by you, the specialist that deals with supercars, or who is it that services your car, etc., etc.? Um, can you give me their number? And I'll contact them and find out if they'd be happy to inspect the car and at what cost. And look, Really, when you're spending like seven, eighty thousand dollars or whatever on something, and, and you actually it doesn't matter, but like in this in, in this instance, if you're spending seven, eighty thousand dollars, sixty thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars, you know, if you're spending, in other words, if you're spending a lot of money, right, two hundred and fifty dollars out of your pocket now is worth its weight in gold because that two hundred and fifty dollars could cost you or save you ten thousand dollars down the line or five thousand dollars down the line, and interestingly enough, that is exactly what happened in this instance. So. A little bit different. This guy is really, really top-notch bloke. He actually is living in, uh, working in Australia at the moment. He actually flew over specifically. I guess we had a pretty good relationship. You know, like I think we're on the same wavelength. He came over and said, look, I'm going to come over. I'm going to have a chat with the wife and we'll talk about this potential deal, see if we can make it happen. And um, anyway, unbeknown to me, what he actually did was he took that into his local specialist who actually have the same car as I'm looking to buy. So they, they have a really good knowledge behind it which you have to be very careful when you're dealing with supercars because they, one, not only do they cost quite a lot of money, but you know, very often they have specific ways and protocols of how you work on certain parts of the car. So anyway, um, 
So he sends me an email, and I get this email saying, uh, hey, look, just to let you know, I want to be really transparent about what's going on. As I told you, I came over here, I decided to take it down to my local uh, specialist. It's this company. You can go online, you can read all about them. And they got the car, and I got them to do an inspection for me, because like, honestly, I just wanted to make sure the car was tipped off if I'm going to sell it because of what it is. And unfortunately, we found that uh, one of the cam chain tensioners was actually out of it, it was stuck. It was stuck in the same position. Now, that's a, that was quite a big problem because the type of car that is and the high performance car that is, what means one of two things. If that had gone wrong, that would have ultimately led to significant cost, pretty much right off of the car, okay, losing the engine in one of those. I would like to think how much it costs to replace one of these engines. And then, then the next problem that came from this was that um, this is quite a complex thing to fix, right? You've got to take the engine out of the car, you've got, and then if you're taking the engine out of the car, one would say, well, if I've got to do that, why just do the one chain? I might as well do all the chains, right? And then while I'm at the chains, I might as well look at the clutch. I might as well do the spark plugs. In other words, I might as well do everything that I would maybe do on the next service or the next two services because it's a pretty big labor intensive task to pull the engine out. Now, how many hours do you think it would take to do the work on this car, take the engine out, right? We're talking 40 hours estimated labor. Now, 40 hours estimated labor uh, between $100 and $150 an hour, right? Like we're talking $8,000 plus, okay? So let's say I've worked out a deal, let's just say $75,000 on the car, and if I hadn't done this, I'd buy the car, guaranteed either one or two things would happen. I'd maybe pick up that there's something not quite right about the car, go into dealer, they would tell me the same thing, eight grand, nine grand lighter, or even worse, I drive the car and, um, the engine blows and then I have a major catastrophe on my hands and my whole business model comes falling apart. So there's certainly an element of risk. Now, the great thing about it is I know about these problems now, so I'm quite happy to work with this guy. In fact, I'm happy to pay a little bit more money to help him um, subsidize this cost because I know then that I'm getting a car that's had all these things dealt with. That's not to say that this is 100% because there are a couple of other things that I, I need um, confirmation on, but you can see the benefits straight away. Look at something big, look at something expensive, spend a little bit of money, mitigate against as much as can against some potential problems to try and save you money in the long run. So really speaking, if you're looking to buy anything used, the higher the case, the older the thing is, the more money you're prepared to put in it, the more you should be thinking about, right, should I get this inspected? Now most people, like many people, especially in the motorcycle community, actually have a good knowledge and understanding about, you know, like different components of the bike. I'll be absolutely honest with you, I like riding bikes, I understand the technology behind bikes, but when it comes down to the fundamental mechanics of being able to spot things that could be a potential flaw or breakage later on, that is not my forte. So, Hopefully that's food for thought. What you get from this is always think about investing a little bit of money, even if you don't buy it, in um, checking out a motorcycle or a car before you buy it. So for now guys, that's MC Procrastinator Road.